just tuned in to the 3 a.m. Download Morning Devotion. I'm your host, David L. Marks. I want to first of all say thank you all for tuning in today. This is another live broadcast. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on the live uh, video portions of, of the podcast as well as the audio portions of the podcast. God is doing amazing things right now uh, in the ministry. Shout out to Andrew and uh, Rick Lopez. Thank you. Thank you. So many comments on the shirt. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. Shout out to my man, Eric Simmons, for the music. Thank you so much, man. God bless you, Eric Simmons. Um, with E, Life Productions. Um, we're just going to go ahead and just dive right into it. Um, this morning we're going to be coming from Ephesians chapter 1, verses, uh, verse 11. And it's just pretty much talking about we have an inheritance. But God was showing me some things in this. So... Uh, I just want to go ahead and just dive right into it. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses, in the verse 11, it says this, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Oh, that that right there just, it just speaks volumes into my life. And I'll be honest with you, I might not even get to everything that I wrote down. Because it's such an impactful scripture. I'm going to read this to you again. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. An inheritance. Being predestined, which means our lives are already destined according to his great pleasure. According to his purpose for our lives. According to his will. It's already already been predestined. But I want, I want to help you through this scripture to see some things because I, I think that sometimes we go through things in life. We don't necessarily understand why we're going through them and why things come and why it seems like we're surrounded by um, so many things, so many troubles, so many heartaches, so many tears of pain and so forth. Why these things seem like they come at us all at one time. I'm going to help you understand some of these things today. But I want you to understand that everything that is happening is he already predestined in his purpose. Um, it's him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Again, it's Ephesians 1 and 11. Now, no matter what is going on or how obscured our understanding is of our situation, I believe God is always working things according to his great and sovereign plan. It is as if there's this giant tapestry or this giant quilt like this right here, like this one right here behind me. A giant tapestry and I'm glad this is here because as you can see that like there's all kind of different designs and patterns inside this tapestry you know what I mean it's all kind of different things so that resembles our life that there's so many things that happens in our life that doesn't always look the same but always brings the same emotions always brings the same pain always brings those things that hurt and and causes so much grief but guess what God is weaving these tapestries together for our good. Now imagine, imagine if you will. I don't know how many of you have ever had a grandmother out there or, or a mama who has uh, done hand woven quilts. Um, you know what? Can somebody do me a favor? Somebody tag Krista March in this, please. Somebody tag my wife in this, please. Um, grandparents or, or grandmother or mother who has had woven together or sewn together a, a quilt, a baby quilt, if you will. Each one of those, um, thank you, Brittany, um, means something. Each one of those panels in that quilt means something, has some kind of a meaning to it. Just like in us, each season of our life, each panel that God is weaving together, each situation, each circumstance, each heartache, each season, each storm in our life, God is using and weaving together to make a beautiful tapestry. And there's three things inside this tapestry that I want you to see today. And the first thing is the tapestry that is weaving together is creating a bigger tapestry. It's creating a bigger quilt. Why? Because the quilt that he's, that he's weaving together with your situations is one, making something so huge that it's going to cover generations to come. The, the testimonies that are woven inside this quilt is going to cover generations to come. Generations brought on by you. Generations that is, that you're connected to. Generations that you're speaking life over. It's going to bring testimonies through that. 
through those tapestries. Excuse me. The second thing I want you to understand that God is going to get the glory out of this. God is going to get what he needs out of your life. And that's his glory. So everything that is happening in your life, every situation, every struggle, every setback, every heartache, every pain, every disagreement, every discomfort, it's working for his good because he's taking it and he's weaving it together to create this beautiful tapestry of a testimony that's happening in your life right now. The third thing that's happening out of this is that God is receiving, is, is building a character in you that he wants to use and work through a character that you didn't even know you had. He's bringing things out of you through these tapestries. That way he can receive the glory that it covers a multitude of generations through the testimonies and in testimonies, testimonies that are coming. And even the testimonies that's already been had three care three that he gets the glory out of this. Now, Sometimes it's, it's as if that sometimes I get, we all get caught up in the things, the temporal things that is happening, that are happening around us. Uh, the storms that are coming on a daily basis, the, the setback in finances or the letdowns that, that have happened in your life. The, 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 when you start to put your trust in men and you get let down, you know, that pain and that hurt creates a tapestry. Um, the temporal things, uh, when, when, you know, the scripture in Psalms says some put their trust in chariots and some put their trust in kings and princesses, but I put my trust in God because he never let us down. He'll never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. If we can grab a hold of this principle and of this concept, we will begin to understand that everything that happens in our life happens with a design purpose from God. Everything. This past couple, uh, there was a couple nights ago, we had, we were in revival, and this just popped in my head. It's a perfect testimony to this, perfect example. My spiritual father, uh, Pastor uh, Bill King, um, from the Potter's House, he just had a stroke, and he was at revival a couple nights ago, and the uh, brother Andre Vanzel, he was the he was the guest speaker for this uh, for the revival that we had going on. He looked at him and he said. Why are you on the pulpit? And you just had a stroke. And he was just up there the night before. He could barely walk. But he's walking. And God has done a miraculous thing. Don't get me wrong. God has done a miraculous thing. But here's what I wanted you to see. The difference. Because mom, I call her mom, Sister King, his wife, was there with him. He's laughing and smiling about, he knows what's going to happen because he understands the concept or the principle that everything works together for his good. Why? Because his heart is with God and not just with his lip service. And mom was sitting there and, and, and the, uh, and brother Andre looked at mom and said, you're worried, but he's laughing. You're concerned, but he's laughing. If we can all grab that principle to laugh and smile and out, keep that joy through all of our situations, through every circumstance, the outcome is going to be so much better. Not only that, it's going to speak volumes to everyone that's watching you. Because trust and believe, someone is watching you go through everything that you're going through right now. And your life is a testimony to them of how good God is. Self-check. Think about that. Who's watching you? I might have to preach that one, preach that one day. Anyway, we get caught up with the temporal things of life. And we, we say, you know. These things come and they may surprise us, but guess what? Nothing surprises God because like I said, he's weaving all these things together into a great pattern. Your mistakes, the stuff that has happened to you, for example, the, the thing that has happened to you in your past, mistakes that you've made, um, the shame that, that someone put on you or that you, you accepted yourself. <clears throat> I feel this thing. That thing that happened to you when you were 10 years old in that bedroom was not your fault. That thing that happened to you in that bedroom when you were 10 years old was not your fault. You, there's no reason to feel guilty about it. God is going to take that particular thing and weave it. And he has already started weaving that into a beautiful tapestry that he's going to deliver you and heal you from that pain. He's going to heal you from that hurt. He's going to take that pain that was meant to destroy you and kill you and, and to kill your spirit, he's going to take that and bring 
make you full of joy and deliver you and heal you from that. Why? So you can be able to go back and pour into somebody else and heal them that's been through something similar to that. I don't know who that's for, but that's a freebie right there. Now, it occurred to me that nothing occurs to God. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that awesome? It occurred to me that nothing occurs to God. Nothing takes God by surprise. Why? Because everything is already predestined. He knows our end from the beginning. Why? Because he's spoken into existence as he stood in the middle of everything. Why he stands in the middle of our lives. When, when we were, went through all those situations and those heartaches, he stood there through the test of time and seen everything. Now, the situation or circumstances you are in right now did not take God by surprise. Whatever your situation is, you can rest assured that God has plans to work those things out. God is working all things after the counsel of his own will. So guess what? Relax. Chill. God's got it in control. Everything that has happened to you, every circumstance, every situation, God has it in control. So all you need to do is just relax. Everything that has happened to you is right there in the palm of his hand. He has it just like he holds the world in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. That's literal. He has everything in his hands. I mean, even the situation that you're going through at this present moment in your marriage, in your finances, whatever it might be, he has it in his hand. God saw it come, saw it coming. And he guess what? He already made the provisions way before, way before, excuse me, way before the situation even came. So if you believe that God, God's grace is sufficient enough, then we need to walk in victory. Let's look at this like this. Peter had a thorn in the side and he prayed three times that God removed that thorn from his side. He prayed three times and God told him, through your weakness, I am made strong. So my grace is sufficient enough for you. So whatever you think that is a hard task for you, keep in mind that God's grace is sufficient for you. And there's nothing you're going through that you cannot get through without God's help. Now, if you go out of the loan, you're going to have a harder time. But if you give it over to God and you smile and you release it and you relax and let God have it and take control, you'll be just fine. Now, I'm going to talk about David for a minute. Don't Now, we, get, we can't just trust God with our lip service. We can't just trust him with empty praise and empty worship. We got to do it from our heart. Because if not, we're just wasting our God-given breath, right? David had only three things. He had a sling, he had a rod, and he had his God. You, you got your word of God, and you get your faith in God. That's all David needed, and that's all you need. That that was all he needed. Now, March to, uh, Matthew 21, 21 says this, if you have faith and do not doubt, you can move mountains. So there's nothing that you're going through right now that God hasn't already accomplished or he hasn't already had the got the victory over. There's nothing you're going through right now that God has doesn't have the victory over. God has victory in all things. So stay faithful, stay positive. God loves you and so do I. But before I go, I want to read this to you right here because I think it's a it's an apostolic duty to offer an invitation to have a communion ship with God. And, and to become a part of the sonship. So Romans 10, 9 says this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you believe that, if you believe that, then I want you to repeat this small prayer after me. Lord Jesus, for too long, I've kept you out of my life. I know that I am a sinner and that I cannot save myself. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith, I gratefully receive your gift of salvation. I am ready to trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day. 
Thank you for bearing my sins and giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true and your spirit is real. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I believe if you prayed that simple prayer right there, that you are now saved. Thank you, everybody that's logged on today. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, Devarius, man, I miss you, man. Um, so I pray that 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 you if, if you prayed this prayer that you are now saved. So this is what you need to do to complete the process. You need to get inside of a Bible believing, truth teaching, faith based church. Get become a part of it because we need that fellowship. We need to draw strength from each other. Then I'll need you to get a Bible. It doesn't. It, it uh, some say King James version. We're not going to get into the different translations. The, the the thing is, you need to get yourself a Bible. Flat out, period, 100. Get yourself a Bible. Begin to read it. As a matter of fact, I need you to read Ephesians 1 and Ephesians chapter 2. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Ephesians. Read that, and that's going to begin to describe to you who you are and how God sees you. Amen? Uh, also, as you're reading that word, like David said in the book of Psalms, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And what happens with that is, like like in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So as you're reading the Word of God, you're hiding God inside your heart. And what happens when you hide God in your heart, the Word in your heart? You draw strength from that, and it gives you the ability to withstand the fiery darts of the devil. It gives you the ability to stand strong, even when everything else is around you falling apart. It gives you the ability to stand firm and planted in God's promises to you. Why? Because his promises are yes and amen. So stand firm on that. Get yourself a Bible. Begin to read it. Ephesians 1 and chapter 1 and chapter 2 is a very good place to start. Hide the word in your heart. Become a part of a truth teaching, Bible believing, faith based church. And I'll keep you in my prayers. If you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to me. Send me a private message. Uh, hit me up in, a, in, in an email if you want to. That's D V D March. D is in David. V is in Victor. D is in David. March. M A R C H, like the number. And then 71, the number 71, not the word 71, the number 71 at yahoo.com. You can find me here on Facebook. So shoot me a message. Or you can find me on Instagram. Either way, hit me up if you have any private, if you have any questions. Um, if you want prayer for a particular thing, just hit me up, hit me up. I got you and we will pray. So father, right now in Jesus name, I thank you for this opportunity to come and bring this word uh, of how you've woven a tapestry of our lives of oh God and that you've speaking, you have spoken to our end from our beginning because you stand in the middle. Father God, I pray that this word does not return void, that it has impacted somebody's life and that it has changed the perception of how we see our circumstances, that we change our perception of how we see, how you see us. God, I pray for everyone that's watched this video and those that are going to watch this video. God, I pray that favor be before them, be behind them, and be with them. Lord, I have your way. And thank you again for giving me this opportunity to pour life and speak life and sow seed of life into these beautiful, beautiful children of God. Lord, have your way and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, look, that's my time. I appreciate everybody for hanging out and uh, staying with me this long. But it's time to go. All right? So, hey, y'all have a good one. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Be blessed.